uh, because uh, central banks really can respond to demand side shocks rather than supply side shocks. But it turns out that the, so the shock was from both angles. It was both a supply side shock and a demand side shock. And as I said, the central bank uh, can respond to the uh, demand side shock because that is what uh, we do all the time. Monetary policy is about cyclical growth rather than, uh, rather than structural, uh, structural growth. And so as this thing comes, various economies responded in uh, different, uh, in different ways. And, um, uh, but what had been clear had been that um, countries respond based on the policy space uh, that, uh, uh, that they have. And so um, the first response from the South African authorities was necessarily a, a health response, uh, an aggressive education uh, of the public about the nature of the virus and the impact that it would have and how South Africans could actually protect themselves against the virus and what precautions uh, uh, to be taken. It also necessarily involved the preparation of the health system and health facilities um, such that they would be able to cope uh, when the infections uh, started, to, uh, started to rise. Yes, infections did rise, and, um, but the, ma the manner in which they had evolved, they seemed to, it seemed like that the measures that had been taken had succeeded in um, mitigating the adverse impact on the health system and that the health system had been able to cope with the extent of the infections in the South African uh, economy. That had come at a cost because um, in the quest to protect um, uh, people against the uh, infections, the step that was taken um, was consistent with what we have seen elsewhere in the world, which was to take the country uh, into a lockdown. And so when the country went into a lockdown, uh, in the context where you had an economy that was already in recession, it then meant that uh, uh, the nature of the shock uh, is uh, going to be more uh, pronounced than uh, it otherwise uh, uh, would have been. The fiscal authorities responded with uh, an adjustment to the fiscal stance, uh, including accommodating the fact that tax revenue uh, had uh, uh, fallen below, uh, below budget, and that was captured in the tabling of a supplementary budget that the Minister of Finance uh, 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 presented. Today, I am not going to speak about all of those other responses. Today, I am going to speak to you about what were the responses of the monetary authorities, that is, the South African, uh, South African Reserve Bank. Our response was fivefold. Firstly, is that we did what we uh, uh, are fully in control of, uh, which is to make borrowing and lending uh, decisions via the interest rate mechanism. So we lowered interest rates. And um, in the period from March to July, we lowered the policy rate by a cumulative uh, 300 basis points. And that was uh, actually quite uh, uh, significant. Um, and so we had been lowering rates consistently from January uh, until uh, July at each one of our, uh, of our policy, uh, uh, policy meetings. And the total of that was 300 uh, basis points. Well, if you take that and you compare it to what other emerging markets have done, you will find that emerging markets 
uh, have uh, adjusted policy rates with for a median of 100 basis points. So South Africa is above that median because we adjusted the policy rate by 300 basis points. And with that, it meant that the response of the Reserve Bank was not just speedy and aggressive, but was also unprecedented uh, historically when we look at our own uh, history. The repo rate is now at its lowest on record and below zero in real terms. The second response from uh, the South African Reserve Bank was, of course, the, that we provided liquidity. We made liquidity abundantly available to banks uh, through a range of facilities in addition to our usual repo auctions, uh, which we uh, take up picking at 83 billion rent uh, uh, in March and ticking. The third uh, response was that we provided regulatory relief to the financial sector uh, to help maintain the flow of credit in the economy despite the temporary payment problems for firms and households caused by the COVID-19 uh, shock. And this was important uh, because um, household consumption is a very important component of GDP expenditure uh, uh, in South Africa. And so through this regulatory relief, the financial sector was able to maintain the flow of uh, credit. And fourthly, we offered uh, funding for uh, small to medium-sized enterprises, starting with 100 billion rands with an option to scale up to 200 billion rands uh, over time, or some 4% of GDP. To be clear, this facility is actually a national treasury facility, for they are the only ones with the skin in the game. They are the underwriters of this scheme, uh, which means that uh, they assume the biggest uh, losses. So the banking sector will assume 6% of the first loss, and the other 94% will then uh, come uh, to the treasury. The scheme is, um, if you compare it uh, internally, it is in line with many others uh, around the world, uh, which had been varied depending on country circumstances. But behind all of these schemes is that you had a treasury that stood uh, behind the scheme. The fifth and last uh, uh, response was that uh, we have been buying government bonds in the secondary market uh, to improve market functioning. Uh, the total of the new purchases now stands at uh, just over around 30 billion rand, which is an increase in our bond portfolio um, from pre-crisis levels. Again, this is comparable to purchases by other uh, emerging markets. To be clear, we decided to embark on a bond purchase program not because we do not like the price in the market and thus are trying to manipulate the prices in the bond market, but rather we did it because there was a dislocation in the market and because of that dislocation in the market, we were duty bound to step in and make sure that the market continues to function. And why is it in the interest of the Reserve Bank to have the uh, bond market function? Firstly, is that the execution of our monetary policy is actually uh, driven by a collateral system. And that collateral system has to be priced in the market. And if the market is not functioning, it means that we will be taking collateral for which we do not know what the actual value uh, is. Secondly, is that we also run the auctions for the government. Government funds itself in the bond market. And for the government to pay a, pay a fair market price at the auction, they must know what the price in the secondary market is. 
And if you had a secondary market that is not functioning, that would mean that government would be funding at rates that probably do, uh, might not be reflective of the true price of debt uh, 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 in, the, uh, uh, in the market. And again, as I said, this was comparable to what emerging market peers uh, 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 have done. Now, that had, been, uh, uh, that had been our response. Based on all of this, we, at the previous policy meeting, uh, presented a forecast that says that we expect growth uh, to contract by 7.1% uh, during the course of this year, with a recovery next year to just over 2%. And, um, and trying to go beyond that is really a forecaster's uh, a nightmare because there are so many moving parts and so much um, uh, uncertainty. And with that, you also have to take account of the fact that the statistical agency, Statistics South Africa, had had to make adjustments to some of the figures that they had released with respect to inflation. And I would expect that they will do the same with respect to uh, GDP compilation uh, because survey respondents were simply not there uh, to uh, respond to, uh, to, the, uh, to the statisticians. So with that, uh, Chris, that, let me then take it. All right, we are sadly going to cut out of that address then by the Reserve Bank Governor, Lise Jahanya, who will, of course, give you an update on what he has made note of as well. Then South Africa's economy, of course, continuing to struggle in, in dire situation right now. The plan post-COVID-19 is going to have to be a serious one and one that seriously needs to amend what has happened before. And, of course, South Africa's economy was struggling even before COVID-19. All it's done is just exasperated and opened those gaping holes even further. But can government fix what it has laid bare? That is going to be the big question. We're going to take a short ad break, though, now. And